sent over 1 million cold emails and made 2.3 million in cash. And here's the nine things that you need to know to stop getting boasted and actually make some money with your campaigns. And the first one is relevancy. You need to actually give them a reason why you're contacting them in the first place. You don't want to use some BS fake personalization. Okay, the market has sophisticated and they already know that your personalized first line isn't actually personalized. So what you want to do is make the email feel as if there is an actual valid reason why you're talking to them in the first place. You want to make sure that you're hitting either a pain point or a goal or you've had some sort of identification that actually resonates with them. That way, when they click and open your email, they don't just instantly delete it and they actually want to read it because they feel like maybe you actually know who they are and you might be able to genuinely help them achieve something they're trying to do and that brings me on to lesson number two you see the success of any good marketing campaign and any good cold email campaign greatly depends on the offer but i think people have taken this overboard you see the agency space has been flooded with these copy and paste agencies popping up all over the place sending the same irresistible offers to the same lead. So the way that I think about offers is almost the inverse. So yeah, we want to take some of the core principles, but we want to also add a few other things. So for example, what we want to do is yes, we want to connect this result to being fast and easy to obtain as well as you know, easy to apply and implement it within their business. And that's why done for you has a greater perceived value. But we also want to make them feel behind the curve by introducing some sort of new opportunity or new mechanism that they should be well aware of. This way, you're able to actually beat market sophistication. And, you know, as well, we, we do need to solve a big problem. So that's why we do a lot of the research beforehand to make sure that the problem we're solving is the thing they're actually struggling with and that they know that this is for one specific type of person. Now, the real kicker that I think everyone forgets is the offer needs to be believable. If they don't actually believe that this is something you can do for them, they're never going to respond. And the final thing that I like to throw in is something that is consistent over time to get the result that they're looking for. So you don't want it just to be kind of some duct tape over a hole and to plug a gap. You want it to be something that month after month after month for years, it solves the problem that they have. Now, later on in the video, we can talk about what to do if you actually don't have a good offer or maybe your client doesn't have a good offer. But with offers, what I see is that all these people creating these irresistible offers from Alex and Mosey, you know, they read this book, they take some offer, they throw up some crazy numbers and send it out in a campaign. Maybe they hit a thousand people or 10,000 people, but they expect all these people just to buy from them. But when they don't buy, and chances are, if you just do that, it, they're not gonna buy. And then when it doesn't work, you just give up. You see, the best thing you can do with cold emails is to cycle through pains, cycle through desires, cycle through different angles until you find the thing that actually resonates with this person. Then what you wanna do is double down once you've found this, because that's how you find product market fit. You find a segment of the market who needs a specific type of offer. And then when you have that, you try and make as much money as you can, okay? And now lesson number four is all about selling the reply. You see, I mentioned earlier that sometimes their offers just aren't that great. It can be really difficult to get replies for and you may even question if it's worth running in the first place. And that's where we introduce lead magnets. So we personally use at growth plans as a lead magnet to build our $2 million growth partner agency. Okay. So the goal between this is you just want to get more people to put up their hands and say, yeah, like I'm interested in this. And it doesn't have to be directly correlated to exactly what your offer is. Like you don't have to use a growth plan like we did. It could be some sort of workshop, it could be some sort of interview or podcast invite or some sort of ebook or free training. And when you use any of those, it's much easier to get people to say that they're interested than trying to go after a call every single time. So if you're struggling to get replies, instead of just going straight for the kill or adding some crazy guarantee, try and use a lead magnet. That way you're just wanting them to reply to you just to say yes or no. And as soon as they reply, you can basically endlessly follow up with them time and time again until they essentially tell you to F off or they eventually book on a call to work with you. Now, lesson number five is something that works for 
any kind of campaign. You want to play to their ego. You don't want to sit there talking about you. You want to focus on them and making them feel good. So let's just take this script, for example. Hey, name, not sure if this is for you, but figured I'd ask. We've been helping education leaders like yourself who have an incredible product, but would agree that their sales, marketing might need work to reach that next level. Now, if we deconstruct that, education leaders, incredible product, want to reach that next level. What we're doing there is we are literally taking specific bits of identification that also play to their ego. So we're not making it very obvious what we're doing. We're not making it so that they read that script and instantly know we're trying to give them some backhanded compliment. We want to weave it into the conversation in a way that strokes their ego just enough to disarm them from the fact that this is a cold message to get them to respond, okay? Now, this brings me to the next thing. So lesson number six is just to keep things simple to understand. Every script I've ever written, you will be able to understand the idea of the script in the first five seconds of reading it. And the reason I do that is very simple. These people don't have time to sit there and read some long paragraph about you and your company and how great you are and how you can help them. You wanna keep your email short and conversational. You know, you're not, you're not a robot. You wanna write an email that is direct enough and where you can make it quantifiable so it's just really clear to understand exactly what you can do to help them. They should really be able to understand this in the first five seconds of reading it. One of the things I do is firstly, I'll write it in Gmail so I can actually see and visualize what they're gonna see. But then once I've written this email, I'll try and cut back 30% of the words. And what you'll find is that typically, it's basically the same thing, just makes more sense. So I basically wanna cut out any word that's even slightly fluffy that doesn't directly tell them what I want them to know. So once you cut that out, it makes it much easier for people to comprehend. And then I'll even send that to myself and I'll pull up my phone and I'll literally go on Gmail and I will see what people are seeing when they open the email. It's the same reason why I write it there. You wanna visualize exactly what it looks like. You wanna see how it's written, how is the spacing, what's the white space doing for you. And when you do that, it's much easier to build something that people are actually gonna respond to rather than these long paragraphs that I see so many of you actually sending. And when you do that, it's so much easier to get someone to reply because you're not sending these long paragraphs that they have to sift through just to understand who you are and what you're trying to do for them. So you wanna make it short and snappy and to the point. Now, once you've actually got someone to reply to you, you've done the hard part, okay? And I can't tell you the amount of times I've had to follow up five, 10, even 20 times with a prospect just to get them to go and book on a call after they've already followed up, okay? You've done the hard work at that point. You've got someone to reply to a completely cold message, but then you just give up if they don't instantly book on a call. To me, the way that I think about it, that client's worth 100,000 to me, then every single one of those follow-ups could be an extra 100,000 in my back pocket. I mean, truthfully, what wouldn't you do for an extra 100,000 right now? So when you think of it through that frame, it's much easier to motivate you. Or if you have a team, you can use the same and a similar frame for them and their commission. Now, one of the biggest things that I've learned over the last 10 years of marketing is context. Again, it's the reason why I look in the Gmail. It's the reason why I write there. It's the reason why I send it to myself. Because what I see right now in the market is there are so many of you that are just blindly copying templates and funnel hacking all these different people. Because what you're missing out on is why is that customer taking that specific action on that page to that messaging? What is it that is going on in their mind that is getting them to take the action that we want? And yeah, look, there are some patterns, some templates and stuff like that that do consistently work. It's why you may go to YouTube or go to Twitter and you may find a template and have some reasonable success with it. It's why things like the offer formula of we help niche get transformation in time frame without pain point or you know using unique mechanism works time and time again. And truthfully, it's not a bad place to start. But if you wanna be the best, if you wanna make your clients the most money, if you wanna make the most money, you have to break the normal that everyone else is doing. You can't just copy everyone else, otherwise you're just gonna get results like everyone else. So you need to look through the script, you need to look through the messaging, you need to look through your funnel and just ask yourself, how would your target market respond to this? You wanna put yourself physically in their shoes and actually understand how you should be communicating 
what message they need to see, what questions are going through their head so that you can actually manipulate them in a kind way. <laughs> to take the action that you want them to take. And this is why when I'm writing emails, I do it in Gmail. This is why I keep my messaging short. This is why I keep things direct and quantifiable and relevant. And why so many of your templates that you are copying just stop working all of a sudden. You know, it's why your emails are probably getting instantly deleted while I'm out here collecting multiple seven figures a year from cold email. You know, think of it this way, the famous quick question subject line that everyone seems to love. Okay, now if you're a prospect and you receive that five, 10 times a day and you're sending that, do you not think that they already know that that's a sales pitch? So they're just gonna boop, delete and that's gonna be gone. They're never even gonna open it because they know that you're just trying to pitch them, okay? That's why I use more curiosity based. That's why I use more pain driven subject lines or desire driven subject lines. No, uh, one, I'm being direct with them if it is <laughs> pain or desire driven or I'm just doing enough, just enough to get them to open their inbox without already setting the pre-frame that this is a sales pitch. Now, with all that in mind, this brings me on to my last point, which is that existing online. See, when people are getting your cold emails, the first thing they're gonna go and do is look at your profile and your website. They're gonna look and see if you actually exist. They're gonna see who you are. They're gonna go look at your LinkedIn. They're gonna see your picture, your bio. Do you have featured items? Do you have any connections that they know? You know who you help? Is it clear? Then they're gonna go find your website. The same thing. Does it look like a scam? Does it have any proof? Does it tell them exactly who it's for? Is it some generic website where they have to sift through all this information just to understand what you actually do and how you might be able to help. So you need to make your profile and your website sales assets. It needs to be really clear who you help, how you help them, who you've helped before. You need to answer the questions that are going on in their head. You know, why should they trust you? Why should they respond? And ultimately, if you get that right, they're gonna go book in a call with you without even replying to your emails in most cases. But if you get it wrong, it's why people are not replying to you at all. So it's not just about what's going on in the inbox or with the copy that makes a difference. It's everything else within the ecosystem. Do you have valuable content they can look through? Do they have people they can reach out to and just ask about you? Can they go and actually easily find you online like if you search your name do you even pop up in google if you search your company is it secure it's these little things that make all the difference and these are the nine most important lessons that i've learned sending over a million cold emails over the last few years and if you want to learn how you can combine everything you just learned with ai to book as many sales calls as possible for your business or your clients and ultimately make the most amount of money possible with outbound messaging then go ahead click the like button click the subscribe and i'll see you on that video